Yo everyone, the new stats just dropped. Australia has now been upgraded. That's right, there has been a new Australia update. Our stats have changed to fit with the other nations. They call it a census. It, really, it's just an update, that's all it is. So, um, let's see what it's all about. Okay, let's see what the stat changes are to the economy. Yo! I don't understand these statistics, bro. Looks like our GDP increased by 3.3. Yeah? Economy. Changes. I don't know. I don't want to try and figure it out. Bye bye math. Oh, an increase of 10.2% to income. Nice. Oh wait, no, that's company growth pro- <laughs> Company profits increased by 10.2% and there has been no change to ordinary time earnings for full-time adults. That is hilarious. Yo guys, I think this is a little bit bugged. I don't think they should have made this change. It makes it too OP for the capitalist class in the Australian video game scene. Really, they should have buffed the um, Povkant class like they did in 2008. Um, I think that was a well-balanced change. Now these Australian dev notes are interesting. Let's look at our international trade stats. How, how, how has the devs changed the way we interact with other player nations? Australian enterprises own 5,176 foreign affiliates. Yo. I don't know I'll keep going yo. What's up everybody, Loom High here. Today I'm gonna go through the dev note through the new Australia update known as the Australian 2021 census. Let's get rocking people. I don't know anything about international trade. Been a lot of industry changes guys. Let, let, let's see how tourism and transport's changed, where are people going these days. If we look at this graph, we can see the changes during um, COVID. <laughs> wow, that is, that is a very big drop, holy shit. You can see guys, our DLC nation, New Zealand, is still our biggest importer of people. You know the saying guys, don't ask a South African why they moved to Perth in the 90s. 5,870 moved. Don't ask any questions, just take the free statistics. Okay guys, alrighty guys, let's see the population clock. How much have they boosted Australia? Let's go. Australia gets a massive population boost every update, and it is it is one of the best things that keep us competitive, you know, against the other countries. It it, it it's a real buff to our um our capabilities in this game. It's what keeps us one of the top most playable nations in the real world. This metaphor of it, the country as a video game is really falling apart the more I talk uh, So I'm just gonna shut up now. Let's have a look at the clock. There are nearly 26 million Australians now. That is amazing. That is incredible. One birth every two minutes Wow, really? One death every three minutes and 12 seconds guys. Let's boost those numbers up. We are doing fantastic everybody. If we all work together, uh, we can increase the clan success rate even further. That's where I'm switching to a clash of clans metaphor. What are you gonna do about it? We're gonna free star Singapore. Take that Singapore. We're the true island nation. Island boys ain't got nothing on hash dog. Hash dog better than the island boys dog. <laughs> Australia's statistics here, every 1 minute and 45 seconds, someone in Australia gives birth. This is contrary to one Australian arriving every minute. That means basically people come in at twice the rate as they are born in Australia. Essentially, Australia's entire economy relies on India having a shit life. <laughs> So everyone, bully the other countries. It's very important that Indians have a shit existence because that makes them more likely to migrate to Australia, which increases our stats. Basically, world suffering is really good for the Australian economy. Keep it up, guys. Disaster capitalism is very cool. Um, let's keep it up, except in the Murray Darling, disaster capitalism sucks there, but everywhere else, Keep doing that disaster capitalism, guys. We need the immigrants, especially the skilled ones. So it has to be shit for everyone in the country, not just the poor people, the middle class as well. That's why we need to stop China's Belt and Road Initiative because um, they're giving Africa too much infrastructure. And if the more infrastructure they have, the less shit their life and the less likely they are to immigrate to Australia. 
Housing. Okay, so one of the end game goals for an Australian, like one of the winning terms, just like in Civ 6, is um, owning a home. Um, so that you do have an excuse to go to Bunnings Warehouse every weekend and get a snag. How many people are selecting and succeeding in that endgame goal in Australia? Let's have a look. Apparently there are a million unoccupied dwellings. Like, I would believe that if every place was like Newman, in which case, yeah, I can imagine every place having an East Newman would amount to a million houses. But a million in like, a place that people want to live? No guys, this is very cringe. Uh, we can't have this. This is, um, bad. It's not very based. Ironic that I'm saying it's not based, given there's a million unoccupied bases involved here, but... Um, basing it on nothing else other than it is cringe, it is not based. Alright guys, it looks like we do have a lot of people still uh, increasing their research skill by going to school. This is epic. We can get a lot more research slots this way. Alright guys, this has been a kind of a slow implementation since the 20th century updates kind of began. But l let's check how the... Um, bad mental health debuffs have been uh, going so far. How, how well have they been defined and updated in this uh, game yet? Turns out that 20% of Australians, that's 4.8 million, have the bad mental health debuff. That is an increase from the 2014-15 update. So it seems that this condition has gotten a massive buff lately. It's quite interesting. Um, that or uh, people's skills in identifying them have improved. I did hear that they actually implemented these in the beginning of the game, but didn't make them um, identifiable until around the 20th century, guys. It seems that uh, the, the, the tools have been improving more than the condition itself, but I need to get into the game code itself to figure that out. Don't worry, guys. 13% of Australians have anxiety. Um, so as long as you don't worry, we can lower those numbers. That's how anxiety works, guys. Anyway, if you don't like and subscribe, I will kill you. I will decide who wins. Let's look at the Pilbara, guys. This is one of my favorite little niche, um, sub-nations within Australia. Little, little Shire place. 26,000 people in the size of Japan. Let's view data and my hometown in Newman. So only 6,500 people live in uh, my home area of the East Pilbara, guys. Wow. I really grew up in bumfuck nowhere, didn't I? Putting off the persona, look at these stats. That is where I grew up. 6,530 people in a region half the size of Japan. Most of the size of Japan. This is East Pilbara we're talking about. That's the big one. Not Ashburton, East Pilbara. This is a very misleading map. It's, it's highlighting all of Pilbara and just says East Pilbara. It's very weird. What do you mean 17? 17 children enrolled in a preschool program? Apparently there are only 41 businesses in the East Pilbara. I'm actually honestly surprised there are only 1,218 vehicles in the entirety of the East Pilbara. I would have assumed the population of cars outweighed the population of people. Though, then again, given how many cars there are on the Great Northern Highway, I'm not surprised. I'm sure the mortality rate of vehicles in the East Pilbara is 16. It is worse than being a Cambodian under the rule of the Khmer Rouge. They would kill all the smart cars so that only the dumb cars from 2013 can exist. Why has Geraldton North got its own stats? Okay guys, that's just a sneak peek at the new Australia 2022 update dev notes. I hope you enjoyed this little rundown guys. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And also your mum's gay. Okay, ciao.